Alright, this is lesson 6.5, the cosine law. This is the final lesson of unit 6 on trigonometry. The cosine law can also be used for non right angle triangles just like the sine law was used for. Although when two sides and the contained angle of a triangle are known, the sine law cannot be used to determine the measures of the other angles and sides. As an example, let's say I gave you this triangle like so and I told you this side was 10, this side is 8, and this angle was 30 degrees. The sine law is not going to do any any good here because you don't know um, a full ratio. So you're kind of out of luck. And so here comes in the cosine law. The cosine law, when you have that exact situation, you're going to be good to go. All right. So. Uh, just like with the last lesson, we went through a uh, proof. That, that time I went through the proof in class. Uh, today what I'm going to be doing is uh, going through it on the computer here because I think it, uh, it lends itself quite nicely. All right. So, uh, developing the cosine line, we're going to use this diagram that we have over here on the right-hand side. It says, consider acute triangle ABC in quadrant 1 with AD that's perpendicular to BC. All right. So first thing that uh, I want to make note of is the coordinates of A. So A is located at this ordered pair C, cosine of B, and C, sine of B. So this is similar as the last uh, lesson that we de dealt with when we were doing the proof. Normally we used R for the C right here, but uh, in this case we're dealing with triangle ABC, so the opposite side then must be little c. All right. So what we then know is that the distance from O to D right here. So then what we know is the distance from B to D right here, being the X distance right here, must be equal to this. So BD is actually equal to C cosine of B. That tells you how far you go in the X direction. And then the distance from A to D right here must be equal to this part right here. So AD is equal to C times the sine of B. All right. Well, in addition to all that, what I can say is in triangle ADC, so I'm talking about this from A to D to C, so essentially this triangle over here, we know some things about it. That I can say that this side DC right here is actually equal to this part that we found, all minus A. So I can say DC is equal to A minus C cosine of B. Once you have that information right here, what we can go and do is we can go and, and solve this and try and determine what um, side B is. Okay, so now that I have this information, I'm going to draw a little line here. We're going to go and use the Pythagorean theorem to determine B. All right, so I'll zoom out a little bit here. So what I'm looking for, again, is I want to try to figure out what that side length is. And if we can figure out what that side length is, you're going to see that we're going to come up here with the uh, cosine law. So in terms of this triangle right here, I know that BC, or sorry, B is your hypotenuse. Okay, So that's the hypotenuse. Then I must have to take the two legs. The two legs would be AD, so this side right in here. So I'll take AD squared, and I'll add dc squared. Okay. But I know that AD, we said, is equal to c sine of b all squared. And dc squared up here, so the information that I'm using is I'm using uh, AD, so I use that part, and I'm also going to use this part, the dc part. This part is equal to a minus c cosine of B all squared. And my goal here now is quite simple. I'm just going to try and take this and solve for what B is. So I get B squared is equal to C squared all times the sine of B all squared plus. What I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to distribute this out. So when I have the, all this squared, you're really going to get this, right? You're going to have A minus C cosine of b all multiplied by a minus c cosine of b because that's what the squared represents. So simplifying here I have the c squared sine b all squared 
and then I'm going to get my FOIL on over here, use the distributive property. A times A gives me A squared. A times negative C cosine B, that gives me one of them. And then notice I'm going to have another one in the middle there. So I'm going to write this as negative 2 AC cosine of B. And lastly, if I take C cosine of B and I multiply it by C cosine of B, I get C squared cosine of B all squared. Okay. Now from here, I have B squared is equal to, I'm going to write my A squared out in front, plus C squared sine of B all squared, plus C squared cosine of b all squared minus 2 ac the cosine of capital B. All right. Now if you recall we really haven't touched on this a whole lot but I'll make a little note over here in black. Do you recall that in one of the first lessons we learned about something called the uh, Pythagorean identity? Pythagorean identity said that the sine of b all squared plus the cosine of b all squared is equal to 1. Well, if you notice right here, I kind of have that right like so. So here's what I'm going to do at this stage. I'm going to go and I'm going to rewrite this, but I'm going to factor out the c squared from those two terms. Do you see that in the brackets then I would have sine of b all squared plus cosine of b all squared minus 2ac cosine of b. Well, when I do that, you'll notice that I get b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared. Imagine if I just go and replace that with the 1 like you have right there. I just have c squared minus the 2ac cosine of b. So I've replaced what I've highlighted right here all with this 1. So c squared times the 1 just gives me c squared. And lo and behold, you have uh, been able to uh, determine what um, the cosine laws. All right, so that's the cosine law that we're um, looking at right there. Uh, you could, of course, go and get what b is all by itself. You just have to take the square root of both sides. All right. Uh, so, in addition, what uh, what we know is that you can rearrange this ever so slightly, right? If I really wanted to know what, um, let's say, for instance, what a squared is a squared is just going to be equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. Or I, if I want to know what c squared was, it's equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2bc, sorry, 2ab cosine of c. So you should be able to notice how those equations kind of all work off of this one. So what I like to think is whatever letters out in front, the B here, the capital B is going to be at the back. Whatever letters are right in here, those letters are going to be in the middle, and you'll see how that works for all those other equations. Okay, So that's the proof. Uh, let's go and deal with the nitty-gritty stuff and try and take a look at uh, some examples here. Okay. So example one, using the cosine law to determine the length of a side. So for this side, what they're, or this question, what they're looking for is they want to get QR. So that's this side right here. Okay. So I will use uh, the cosine law, and uh, the cosine law, of course, is posted uh, right up here, and I'll make a little note for you, and this goes for the sine law and cosine law. These will be provided on the board um, as, as formulas, so I am going to give those to you. So using that equation, I like to always just start by writing the equation out, and then just simply substitute in. So what you can do, if you like this better, is you can actually relabel this thing. Don't even worry about what these little labels are. If you're looking for this side, then that must be C. That means capital C is going to be opposite from it. And that's up to you what you want to use here. You can just call that side B, or sorry, A. Little A would go here. Big B goes there. Little B goes like that. So in this case, we have C squared is equal to 17 squared. That's my little A. Plus 10 squared minus 2 times 17 times 10 times the cosine of capital C, which is 31 degrees. And from here, we'll have C squared. I'll hammer these into the calculator and see what we get. Make sure you're in the right mode. We're in degree mode, so things are looking good. We have 17 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 17 times 10 cosine of 31 degrees. Okay. 
And so we can say that that's equal to approximately at this stage 97.5631. And lastly, of course, to get C by itself, we just need to take the square root. They're asking for you to, ooh, this is ugly spelling right there, to round to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So I will take that answer now, take the square root of it. And to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, we get 9.9 .9 centimeters, like so. Okay, so that's the first example where we are looking for a side length. The side length one's a little bit easier than when you have to uh, uh, look for the uh, angle, like we're going to do right here. So example two says, using the cosine law to determine the measures of an angle. This time, notice they don't even give you a, a diagram, so it's a little bit more complicated. So I'll just start off with uh, my triangle. I'm not even going to worry how, uh, how good it is, how, how much it's drawn to scale. I'm going to make this K. I'll put M over here, and I'll put N right there. So what do they say? They say uh, from K to M is 16, so I'll put a 16 right there. We know that uh, K to N is 11, and M to N is 6. So clearly, as you can see with this diagram, not, uh, not drawn to scale whatsoever. Um, you don't even need to necessarily draw a triangle for this one. It's, uh, it's really kind of up to you, uh, but it might uh, give you an idea of what's going on. Since they want this angle right here, M, okay, you want to make sure that you have uh, that as your, your variable on the outside here. So what I mean is that's where the 11 needs to go. So I'm going to have, if you recall with my little equation, maybe I'll write that first. I have c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab, the cosine of c. What I'm saying is I want to make sure, since we're going to be looking for essentially what cosine of m is right here, you need to have the little m on the outside, so 11 squared. All right, and then the other ones just go with your 16s and your 6. So 16 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 16 times 6, like so. Now this is where it gets a hair bit uh, more complicated. If I'm trying to rearrange now for the cosine of m, essentially trying to get m all by itself, I have to go and uh, move all this other side, all this other stuff to the other side of the equation. So I have 11 squared, and I'm going to move the 16 squared over and the 6 squared over. So right now, this is where I'm sitting. Okay, now, since all of these terms are being multiplied together, in order to get rid of them, I must have to divide both sides by that. So I'm going to divide both sides by this, and you'll see that after this, we're going to have the cosine of m all by itself. So I have 11 squared minus 16 squared minus 6 squared all over negative 2 times 16 times 6 is equal to the cosine of m in this case. Okay. From here I'll put this all into my calculator. And we have 11 squared. Actually I better put the numerator in brackets. Make sure you do that. 11 squared oops, minus 16 squared minus 6 squared. Okay, so that's my numerator. And I will divide it by the denominator here. We have negative 2, I won't even use those brackets, I'll just say times 16 times 6. Close that one up. And that's what the cosine of m is equal to. But remember, when you want angle m all by itself then, so like right now I would just write the cosine of m was equal to 0 0.890625. If you want m now, what you have to do on your calculator is you're just going to take the cosine inverse. So I'll go cosine inverse of all of this crazy shenanigans. And they were asking to the nearest degree, we find out that it's approximately 27 degrees, like so. Okay. Last example, and you guys are free. Example 3 uh, here says, using the cosine law and the sine law to solve a problem. A retaining wall is leaning at an angle of 70 degrees to the horizontal. A rigid support is to be placed 5 meters from the base of the wall, and it will be attached to the wall 2.5 meters from its base. Determine the length of the support to the nearest tenth of a meter, and the measures of the angle between the support and the wall to the nearest degree. Okay, so here's a good example where we really need to draw ourselves a picture. Okay, so I'll draw ourselves a, a little picture like so. Um, let's see here. So we have a side like so side like so. I'll call this one A, B, and C. This angle right here. Okay, This is going to be the retaining wall is leaning at an angle. So I'm going to call this angle is uh, 
uh, what they say, 70 degrees. Okay. I'll say, say, a rigid support is to be